This is problem 9-34. Here you're going to determine the principal stress and maxima in plane. Shear stresses are developed at point A in the 2 inch diameter shaft. Show the results on an element located at this point. The bearings now only support vertical reaction. So these bearings do not support any load this way, only up and down. So if you're given a problem like this, again, first thing you want to do is draw yourself a good free by diagram, which I did here. Now I need to put in the 3,000 going this way and 3,000 going this way. To solve this problem, I, I label this as B, this is C, and we have point A in here. Now you can leave point A out if you want to because right now it's not creating a load. So we'll take that back out and we'll talk about it. So this would basically be your free by diagram. I'll get this out of the way right now. So if I take a moment at B, then I'd have this 300 times this distance here. I make that going negative because it's causing the moment to go this way. Plus the force that you have at C times 48 because the distance from here to here is 48. You solve and you get 225 pounds coming this way. So now what you do, second thing, sum the forces in the y direction and you'll find out that you have 75 coming up here. Now again, you could have just taken a moment at C and you would have gotten 75 here also. Now you have 3,000 coming out of each end. So what you want to do now is we want to find out what the what's happening at A. So A is sitting here right about here and we, we would just come down here, we would draw ourselves a little line and we would say this distance here is going to be 20, let's say it's 24 inches from here to here. Okay. At this point, basically you're going to cut the beam in two. You either look left or look right. It makes no difference. It's it's easier if you look left. So I came down here, I look to my left, and I say these are the loads that's being applied. So here I have a moment, and I have some type of shear that's taking up the 75 that's taking place right there. So I put this down, I'll show the shear diagram like this here. That would be my force here. And then I also need to have another load coming back out here that's taking up to 3,000. All right, so if I sum my force in the y direction, obviously, like I said, I get 75 coming down here. So what I'm saying, if I take, if I take this little, little element here and I look just right in at it, what's happening is the 75 is cutting up this way, the 75 is cutting down this way, here. Now I have the 3,000 that's going to the left, so 3,000 is going to the right, so that's causing a tension. Now with this moment you want to calculate it. So the only moment I'm going to have is 75 times 24. That gives me a moment of 1800. Now the moment is here is trying to bend it this way and bend it this way. So I'll get compression here. I will get tension here. All right. So now we pretty much have everything identified. Now the thing you got to note is shear. This is where you can really mess up. You do not have any shear outer fibers. You never do, here or here. The reason being is because you have no Q. So I've drawn a line here to represent what Q is taking place. If I was going to try to find the value of the shear at C, I'd have to bring my line right up here. I have no area, basically no area between this line and the outer line if I put it right on top of each other, so Q doesn't exist. The only time you're going to have shear is anywhere between the outer fiber and the center of the element itself. If I want to find out, for example, if the question was what's my shear stress here, then I'd use all this area times this moment arm from here to the center of that. That would be my Q value if I wanted to find out the shear here. If, for example, if I wanted to find out the shear at this point, I would use this Q value here and its, it's moment arm be from here, center, to the center of this. So you have no shear at C, you have no shear at D. Now what's is talk about what's taking place regarding the 3000 and the moment. Again, the moment's causing compression here, it's causing tension here because the beam is being bent up. Again, if you think about it, your finger is here, it gets smashed. If it's here, it's going to get pulled apart. Now, the 3000 is pulling both ways, it's causing nothing but tension. So, if I want to find out what the stress is going to be at right here at A, at the very top of the beam, then I'm going to do MC over I, and I've gone ahead and calculated my areas of my inertia. I would get my moment. I'm going to let that be negative because it's compression. I got tension here, so I make that positive. I got 1.337 KSI here. Now, for the heck of it, I said what would be my stress at D. 
my stress here would they're both being in tension so I'd add the two together I get more stress at D than I would at C but again you have no shear whatsoever if you wanted to find out if the point was say here then you'd have no moment I mean your C MCRI would not exist across the center if this was excuse me if this was a neutral axis right here you would have no bending stress here because your C value does not exist yes a moment exists but it, but it causes no um, bending stress because your C value does not exist so your bending stress will always be larger at the outer fibers that's where it is but you have no shear at the center you have high shear maximum shear but you have no bending however you would have the P P over A the 3000 divided by the total area stress would be causing here which would cause tension here but no bending so I ran the value so what we're really interested in is this value right here that's the, the stress at A so now I come down I just draw my low element I got compression 1.34 1.34 so then I can either run it through my program or go through the equations and you'll find out either P1 or P2 I think the um, the solution manual shows P2, this theta 2 it really makes no difference but your principal stress will be minus 1.34 that's all you have here now this is good because this is quite interesting is if you want to run the shear what you're going to note here is um, you're going to get a value here. Now, if you run through a program, be careful because I think the program runs the angle first, and you're going to find out the angle goes to infinity, so the program will not work in a case like this. If it does, you have to go back and put the, the values back in. But anyway, run the equation for finding maximum shear, and you will find out the shear here is, I think it's 0.67 is what I believe my value was going to be. And I think that's KSI. Yeah, it is KSI. So that's my max shear. You go back, you run the angle through, and you're going to find out real quickly that you're going to get something either undefined or, or it's going to go to infinity. If it does that, if you get a value like that, think in terms of this, the sine, the tangent is nothing more than sine over cosine. So the only place that would occur would be 90. So in this case, your shear angle would be 45. And again, to find out whether it's going to be positive or negative, run it back through this equation here using the 45 and I did that and I got 45 is 0 0.667 KSI the positive value here so I can come down here I can rotate this thing up 45 degrees because what I got here I'll draw this oops come back I'll draw this out draw this and again this is 45 I'm gonna orient it and then you're, you would label these as 0.67 667 KSI 0.667 KSI now I have not included the the average stress or the normal stress remember the you're gonna get a force coming excuse me do that again do your vectors you're gonna get one coming in here one coming in here and again you need to draw those normal I'm not doing a very good job here because I'm kind of hurrying coming in here to find those values all you have to do is go back here you take this value here right here you add it to this one which is 0 divide by 2 that's going to give you also 0 0.667 and again you could you could KSI and you can say that's your average stress or average normal stress okay now it as far as oriented with the principal stresses it's just going to be like that there's no rotation whatsoever and the program will show you that when you run it that you're going to get 0 and that, that's it. I mean, that's all you have to do to, to do this uh, problem. It's not too bad. Um, you just got to think in terms of shear, bending, and just your uh, PRA, your, your, your tension or compression stress. Work, work through it carefully, and you can't mess this problem up.